guys and welcome back to another video in this week's Dear Piggy Basic Algorithms in Java video. So basically what we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be putting the bubble sort algorithm in code. Right? Last video we talked about we talked about my quick cookie story and looked at these delicious cookies. Then I kind of showed you a picture of one iteration of swapping the pairs. And finally, we talked about the most important topic, which was the triangular motion. So unlike before, the first video is probably very, very helpful for you to watch if you want to understand what's going on in the code. Right. So I would definitely watch the first video or at least watch the part where I talk about the triangular sort method. Right. So let's go ahead and write it up in code this time. So essentially, the first part that I'm going to do for today, um, not for today, for this slide is to create an array. And that array is going to be the one that we're later going to be able to sort. And then we have a temp variable. Remember, in the picture that we had here, one of the main parts was our temp variable that we had in every single one that we later thought of as our temporary resting station for all of for different numbers. Right. So let's go ahead and try that. So int array is equal to over here, I'm just going to put some random numbers down. And keep in mind, we're going to end up sorting these numbers. So these are going to go from least to greatest. Obviously, we know right now that these numbers are not in the right order just to make things, whoops, just to make things more complicated because we love complicated. I'm going to bring our biggest number to the front here. Okay, so this is going to end up sorted as least to greatest. Then I'm going to initialize my temp variable. Now, what I mean by initialize is initializing basically means that I don't assign it a value. Why don't I not assign it a value? Because there are going to be multiple different values coming in and out of temp later. So for now, I can just say we've created a temp variable. Right now, the current value is null. So initialize the temporary, whoa, temporary variable. Then we're going to go ahead and create our first for loop. So this is called the outer for loop. In bubble sort, we're going to have nested for loops. Now, if you don't remember what that is, we talked about it last time. But essentially, we have a for loop inside of a for loop. And what that means is that the runtime is going to be slightly longer. It's going to be O of n squared. But um, it is, again, a topic that every high school, college course has. So we're going to go ahead and do it. Okay, so the outer for loop is going to be, let's write it out first, it's going to be for int i is equal to zero, i is less than, less than, array dot length, i plus plus. So what this first outer for loop is doing is it's doing the iterations. So like we talked about in the last video, this is considered one iteration. After one iteration, the biggest number is going to be moved to the very back of the array. Now, you can't just have one iteration, right? You wanna have as many iterations as you need until all the numbers are sorted. So essentially the point of our first outer loop is to go through the loop n times, and n is the number of elements in the array, until we see that the array is completely sorted through. So that we make sure that by the end of our um, outer for loop, we have the greatest numbers all at the end. So this is used to um, make sure we run enough iterations so that everything is sorted. That is the point of the first loop. So we've done our first part of our bubble sort code. And we know that we've run it enough times so that we run it um, however many elements there are. But then, most importantly, is this next part. We're going to temporarily ignore the part in the middle because it's very complicated, in my opinion. So we're going to talk about this next for loop here. And so this next for loop is nested inside of our first for loop. We've talked about iterations. So we've talked there are two main things in bubble sort. We did iterations. That was our first outer for loop. Now, the next most important part is the swapping. So that means that our inner for loop, inner for loop, is going to make sure, make sure we end up swapping. Oh, I can't spell today. Swapping all pairs of numbers, right? Remember how we talked about we were swapping, we were comparing pairs of numbers. Well, the inner for loop or the second for loop is basically making sure that we end up 
doing every single pair and that we don't skip around. We end up making sure every two numbers are being compared. So that is the point of our second for loop. However, there is one very, very tricky part that I think really messes with everybody's mind here when we do it. I think this is the part that people get the most confused on. And it is this, for int j is equal to zero, because when we start with pairs, we want to start with the first number and the second number, right? But j is going to be less than array.length minus i minus one j plus plus. Okay, so let me drag this out a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. But what is different about this that we've never seen before, right? Previously, we've seen array.length. We've even seen array.length minus one. But why do we have minus i minus one? In fact, this is the part that messes most people up. And the reasoning behind this is because we want to swap all of our numbers, but we do know that from what we talked about here, after each iteration, each iteration, the biggest number is moved to the very back. So if the biggest number is already in the very back and we have our order, do we still need to sort the iterations that we've already been through in the back? No, right? So that is the whole point of the minus i minus one. We know the i stands for iterations and we're basically saying, I want you to swap all the numbers and have all the pairs, except you don't have to do the ones that we've already been through in the iterations before. Right, so it ends up swapping all pairs of numbers, excluding the end big numbers that we've been through in the back. So subtract the iterations and subtract one. Right, so that is our second for loop. Again, the second for loop is going to be the one that is most hard to understand. Watch the video a few more times, try your best to understand it, even Google it if you have questions. But at the end of the day, guys, I just have to say, what I do for me is I obviously try my best to understand the minus i minus one and I try to my best to remember it. But if you really can't get it, I mean, just if you have a general idea in mind, a few trial and errors aren't going to mess anything up, right? You run your code a few times, you swap, you change things up a little bit, and then you'll end up figuring out that you have to subtract i and one, right? So you just have to run your code a few times to make sure it's going to work, right? So that is the second loop. So first for loop to review is for iteration. Second for loop is for swapping pairs. Then we need to start with our last part, which is writing the for loop, not the for loop, writing the triangular sort method. Everybody remember this from the last video, this triangular sort method. Again, if you haven't watched the last video, I strongly suggest you watch the part about this triangular sort. We're going to write that in code. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to split the screen here, and then we're going to try to show you how this works. And we're going to write all of this that we just went through step by step in code. Whoa, that is very zoomed in. All right, so I'm going to drag this out here, and we're going to say, so first things first, we are going to use an if statement. However, when we sort this, I mentioned this at the beginning, this is all under the assumption that you currently are in the wrong order. If seven and eight are seven here and eight here, or I feel like this might be mirrored, but if seven is in front of eight already from least to greatest, do you need to sort it? No, because it's in the right order, right? So the only time that we need to end up sorting our thing is if the numbers are in the right wrong order. So if array J is greater than array J plus one, why am I saying this? Well, array J is going to be the smaller index. J plus one is the bigger index. So only when the value of the smaller index is bigger than the value of the greater index shall we have to do this triangular sort. So once we do the triangular sort, the first step that we did first is we took the first smaller index and we assigned that number to temp. So we said temp is now equal to whatever the value of the smaller index is, right? Perfecto. We have moved that one up into temp like we've done over here. We have moved it up. We've done this step. So this is step one. Now, our next step that we want to do is step two over here, which is us taking the bigger index number and putting it into the smaller index, meaning that the smaller index is now equal to whatever value was in the bigger index, right? We just brought it over here. We took seven and we brought it over to the smaller index number. Finally, our last one, step three over here, 
is to bring whatever number that we had up on temp that was originally in our big uh, in our first box and bring it down to the second box. So we're going to say that the second box for the bigger index is equal to whatever number we currently have placed in the temporary variable. Right. So again, if you don't understand this part, go back and watch the previous video where I explained this triangular store method. As to what I did here, I just wrote all of the steps that he talked about in the last video. I just put it in coding language. Right. Again, temp is now equal to the smaller first index. Um, smaller first index is now equal to the bigger index. And then the bigger index is equal to the temp number and in the end we will have everything sorted properly so let me now bring this back into full screen and bring this one back over here all right so this is our completed bubble sort this is one of the shorter pieces of code that we've written but it is one of the more complicated ones logic wise i feel like okay so what i want to do is i want to prove to you that we've sorted this so i'm gonna print original array using a for loop for each loop. So for int x in array. Whoa, what happened here? There we go. System dot out dot print ln x. So this is going to be remember for each loops was an intro to Java concept. We use it to print out the items in our array. These are going to be our original items. I'm going to print out a line over here to symbolize where our next part starts. And then after we use our bubble sort, I'm going to um, print out sorted array using for each loop now. And so for, again, we can just copy paste for any integer x in array, print that integer out. There you go, let's run our code. So it should first give us the numbers in the array, the exact the exact order that I need to. Hold on one second error here. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Looks like it's the for each loop that went wrong. Um, for int x in array, system.out.println x. Hmm, let's go back and take a look and see what we did wrong here. So looking back at our code, this is my bad, but if we take a look at our error message, it says or int x for array. And we don't really know what or is, right? So let's take a look at what line it says it's on. It says it's on line 25. So let's go back and look down at line 25. And we're gonna see over here that I have or written instead of for, right? So again, spelling error, it obviously doesn't know what or means. So we fixed that. Now let's go ahead and run it and click run and this time cross your fingers and hope that it works all right so it gives us first our numbers originally in the array so it has 82,932, 48 19 85 100 and then now everything is sorted guys 19 48 85 100 89,932. it's sorted and you can try this again i'll do one more example i'm just gonna put in some random numbers that i see fit and yeah, run it again and see what it gives us. So again, this is bubble sort. We had our nested for loops that use the triangular motion to swap things out. The first outer for loop is for iteration. Second outer for second inner for loop is for swapping our pairs. And you see that everything works perfectly. So yeah, that is the topic for this week, um, our bubble sort. This is something that you will most definitely see in the future if you choose to take computer science. So I highly suggest you um, watch the videos, review them, and let me know if you have any questions. So that's it for this week, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.